Warm welcome and round of applause to Josh Toomer. Thank you. Is the microphone working? Yes. Nice. So this is quite good actually because you've got like the two scousers at the end of the block of talks now. So I think that's pretty good. To be honest though, I lost my when I went to move to Manchester, so that kind of sucks. But um, so yeah, I want to talk to you about how you design a GeoCities website. Put your hand up if you've ever designed a GeoCities website. I'm so happy that so many people have put their hands up. That's great. Um, so my name's Josh, as you already heard. So I'm actually technically a senior software engineer at the BBC, not a developer advocate. I just put that on Twitter because that better describes what I actually do, because I don't seem to know how to code anymore. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I work on our design system, which is very, woo, which is very exciting. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, it's great. I love it. I love my job. Give me a whoop, everyone in BBC who's in the room. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Matt at the back sign. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not going to actually talk to you about anything useful today, because today I'm going to tell you how things were back in 2002. So of course, this is what the BBC website looks like right now. But we're going to go back in time 20 years, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I, Oh, the sound's coming out my laptop. That's rubbish. Oh, well, I'll, I'll do it. No, no, it's fine, Luke. I'll do it. OK, now we're in the, in the, um, the early 2000s. So. All right. Looks, looks a bit rubbish, actually, doesn't it? Should we go back? Um, all right. So, <laughs> so um, that was what the BBC website used to look like. I wonder what the WDC website used to look like. You can scan this QR code right now if you want and follow the bit.ly shortened URL to find out. And well, actually, I'm going to show you what it looks like as well, so you don't have to bother if you don't want to. But it is cool to see it on your phone. Um, and also, don't use your flipping dev tools. Go and view source like we used to back in those days. <laughs> Control U on your keyboard. Do that. Right. So I'm going to hope that this changes Windows successfully. <gasps> no. Oh wait, hold on. I'm gonna have to press escape first because you forget you forget how to use a computer when you're doing a talk. That's the problem. Oh, why why did I do a live demo? <laughs> that this isn't part of the lightning talk time. It's it's this paused. Um, I just end the slideshow and then do that thing where you drag the window over. <sighs> Oh, I've got the DevTools open. Whoops. Uh, you didn't see that. I'm going to look over here now. So, ta-da, this is what it used to look like 20 years ago. Can you believe it? <laughs> so, we used to, although actually, this isn't very realistic, really. It really, we used to, it used to look like this. But, oh, wow, this is wide monitor, isn't it? It used to look like this. Because your monitor would have been this wide. And it had marquees. It definitely didn't have SVGs. That's definitely not an SVG. And it had beautiful fonts. It had wonderful popping colors <laughs> with great color contrast. And I seem to have lost the ability to scroll. Um, oh, that's because the window is too big. Let me fix that as well. Because the window technically would have been 600 pixels high as well. So, and then all the way at the bottom, you've got this website is basically an Internet Explorer 5, because it was. So I hope you enjoyed that live demo. Let's awkwardly get back to the actual presentation. <laughs> They're coming. They're coming. Um, so does the clicker work? Yes, it does. So GeoCities, what was GeoCities for those of you who, who aren't old enough like me to know what they were? <laughs> um, so it was a website where you could host your own website for free, essentially. It was fantastic. And it was even split up into all these different categories. You can't really see what they are here from here. But because I'm this close, I can actually read it. So some of them are things like Area 51 for science fiction. You've got, um, does that say pipeline for extreme sports? OK, <laughs> fair enough. They're all based after places in America, basically, except for um, Athens, because apparently they don't have 
literature or poetry in America. <laughs> but that might be a bit too controversial, that joke. Um, so here's some examples with frames of a GeoCities website. So you have a frame with your navigation bar on the left. You have your website on the right. Uh, fantastic colors, as we can see. I thought this was lovely. Nice little website about fish. I thought that was great. Lovely little website. Ah, oh, and this one was brilliant. This was brilliant. Jacqueline Howitt. And this is on your screenshot. I wish I could show you the animations that were on this. That boat moved across. Dolphins leaped out. Absolutely wonderful. And apparently, some of it's still under construction, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's a shame. Anyway, let's get started. Let's find out how we make a GeoCities website. So um, the first thing to know is this is all you need for your basic structure, for your HTML. Just make sure you've got a title in there. That's the only mandatory uh, element on the page. Everything else is optional. You don't even need the HTML, the head, the body. Don't care what language it is on the page. Don't care what character set it is. No one cares about that. Um, now, you must choose a nice background. I've got some lovely backgrounds here you can choose from. And if you want to apply the background, um, you must include it in this attribute here on the body called background. And you can just say whatever JPEG you want in there. And it will nicely loop on the page and repeat for you. Um, and this is how you would set the default colors. So it's nice and simple. You would just set a BG color, a text attribute, a link attribute, a visited link attribute. Easy. To override the font style, though, we had a really nice, simple tag called font. You could add in the font face, the size, the color. And it came in, get this, it came in seven sizes of, color, of, of fonts. Amazing. Seven sizes you could choose from. No idea what those sizes were. You'd have to find out. But they were great. So that's how I did that on the, sorry, that's how the WDC website was made back then. Um, <laughs> Now, how would you make headings, though? Well, that was simple. You'd just make the font really big. <laughs> nice and simple. But I know we've got monitors of 16 million colors, but you could only use 216 of them, unfortunately, because most of them they might not work very well, because unfortunately, there were some people back in those days who still had 640 pixels wide monitors that could only do a few colors, unfortunately. So you, you've got to stick with these colors, I'm sorry. Uh, and the same, well, for fonts, actually, it was brilliant. You got to choose so many fonts. You could have these fonts. <laughs> they were great. So as long as you use those fonts, it was absolutely fine. Um, I believe it was a project by Microsoft or something, actually. I read on Wikipedia to um, <laughs> my research. <laughs> to, um, yeah, basically provide these fonts royalty-free or something like that. So everyone on Windows got to have them. That was great. Um, we had images. Make sure you do have nice images, just like Jacqueline had on her website. I, I think that was the name I've actually forgotten. Um, so I've got some great examples here. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, and of course, and of course, don't forget to set border equals zero on your images, because if you don't do that, then for some reason, all the web browsers add a border around it if, if the image is in a link, which is kind of annoying. So make sure you add border zero. And of course, set the width and the height. Don't know what the old thing is. I don't know what that does. Um, so make sure, this is really important, make sure you release your website before it's ready, because you know everyone wants to see it. So just make sure you include some kind of message to show people that you're still working on it. Um, some useful gifts that might help with that, actually. I've got some bonus features as well. We've already seen these bonus features back in 2022. So um, you've got the marquee. Beautiful, isn't it? This was a great way to show that you are actually quite a good developer. Just make sure you use a marquee. Uh, you could actually have attributes to this to customize which direction it would go and whether it would bounce, but I don't think anyone used them. You've got the blink tag as well. And it oh, only works in Netscape. Sorry, I can't, <laughs> I can't show you that. Um, actually, that was quite a good thing, to be fair. Everyone only used Internet Explorer. so. You don't really need to worry about these other browsers you might hear about. Um, just focus on testing on Internet Explorer 5. I, I think it's always going to be like that, to be fair. They, they've probably won the browser wars. Um, oh, now this is really important. Um, so how to lay out your page. So um, I'll show you how to do it. So it's nice and simple. There's a tag here called center. 
just use that. That's, that's how it was done for the WDC website. Just apply this center tag. Now, funnily enough, I didn't realize this. I was reading the HTML3 spec. Turns out that the uh, center was actually a kind of uh, thing that Netscape made up. They didn't follow the standards process. Can you believe it? And actually, the standard was div align center. So it became an alias of div align center, apparently. So there you go. You can also have uh, align left, align right. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can do more, though. You can also lay stuff out in a grid. How do we do that? So this, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Tables. So it was cool, actually, because they were invented for showing you know, data in scientific papers and stuff like that. But someone found out you can actually use them to lay out your web page. So it's pretty cool. So this is how this was done, for example. So this is where you get your page really colorful now. OK, so uh, make sure you use this cell spacing equals 0 attribute that I've got at the top there, just to make sure there's no gaps between all your table cells. Uh, set the width to 100%, then you're good to go. So you can set background colors. You can set widths on specific cells. It's great. And also, make sure you use images so that um, everything is laid out nice and correctly. You might want to have a nice little gradient. Make sure you use an image to achieve that. Um, oh yeah, forgot about this. All monitors are 800 pixels wide. So um, I know I said like set it to 100%, but actually it might be easier just to set it to eight, 800 pixels wide because everyone just has an 800 pixel wide monitor these days. Um, but how do we add margins between our content? Aha! I wonder if you knew this. So you use what's called a spacer GIF. <laughs> Has anyone used a spacer GIF before? <gasps> I love it. So what you would do is you'd get uh, a GIF that was transparent, pointless, really nice, small file size, one pixel by one pixel, transparent. And you just stretch it, stretch it to whatever gap size you want. So that's how that was achieved, to get that little gap between uh, that table at the top there with the marquee and the image and the other table below that. Yeah, that's a table. Um, and I just, uh, sorry, the WDC website creators set the width, uh, the height of it even, to 16 pixels. Simple as that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make a GeoCities website. You can go back to the future now. <laughs> that's, not, that's not it. We're, we're back in the future now. One, one more slide. So as you can see in conclusion, so if we think about what Jeremy was talking about in terms of not using things unless they're absolutely needed. Use the simplest thing possible. So as we can see, we can achieve a lot just with HTML alone. You might have noticed that I haven't used a single line of CSS. That is true. Check view source, you'll see. So <laughs> in conclusion, I think you will find that you can make a website just with HTML. The end. No, not really. That's not the end. Please don't do that. That's a terrible idea. Um, if you've never had to do this before, please forget everything I just said, because it's complete. the last 15 minutes were completely pointless. Please don't do this. Um, this is how we used to do things, but I hope you can see that we've come a long way since then. We can actually generate table layouts using grids, which is pretty cool. We can actually make accessible websites that we actually, uh, where we actually care about how our users experience it, and no matter where they're coming from, whether they're using a screen reader or some other assistive technology. Um, yeah, so please don't do this. Uh, please, <laughs> please use modern HTML, CSS, and maybe JavaScript if it's actually needed. Thank you. <laughs>